Hey! Today, I want to talk about drop. Frankly, it's embarrassing that I've been making videos about spanking for two years, and I haven't yet made a video about drop. Drop is the emotional and physical low that BDSM practitioners sometimes experience after an intense scene. And it sucks. A lot. It's also sneaky. And drop has some really tricky tactics that newcomers to the scene might not intuit. So without further ado, here is what I wish more Spankos knew about Drop. What is Drop? After a spanking party or intense scene, there's a good chance you'll experience drop. It's super normal and it happens to almost all of us. Drop can manifest in physical ways like exhaustion, nausea, or other hangover-like symptoms, and it can manifest in emotional ways like anxiety, extreme sadness, or irritability. Drop is basically like coming down from a drug high, except we're coming down from butt stuff, which is even better than drugs. It happens to bottoms, in which case it's usually called subdrop, and it happens to tops, in which case it's usually usually called top drop, and I've even seen drop happen to spankos who did not actually play. Like, for instance, if you go to a spanking party but decide not to play for whatever reason, you're still in danger of dropping from just the adrenaline and rush of being around so many like-minded people. I'm like, I'm wearing a blanket. My point is, no one is safe. We're all in danger of drop. How does drop work? In my opinion, emotional drop manifests in two ways. I'll call them valid and invalid, because I only talk to Zoomers these days and, and they say everything's valid. When you imagine drop, you might imagine something like this. I spilled my coffee! My poor coffee! Oh, I'm so sorry! I let you down! <laughs> That's invalid drop. When the emotional vulnerability of drop causes you to overreact to something that would not ordinarily upset you, like spilling coffee. This happened to me just a few weeks ago. After our recent party in Chicago, I came home and found a hair tie that my best friend had left in my apartment during her last visit, and I completely burst into tears over a friggin' hair tie. I was overreacting, and I knew it. I stood there in my bathroom weeping over a hair tie, and I thought, <sighs> yeah, this is drop. Sometimes the very best cure for drop is just to realize that we're dropping. That's why invalid drop is so great. It's much easier to recognize so we can nab the culprit much sooner. The more insidious kind of drop is what I call valid drop. Valid drop sinks its teeth into a real problem. Maybe you really are dissatisfied at work, for example, and exploits that real problem to make you suffer. When this happens, it's hard to recognize that you're dropping because the underlying problem is real. It's a fair thing to be upset about. Work really does suck. Your boss really is an asshole. You've heard about drop before, sure, but this isn't drop, this is work. Work is the problem. Work is the problem, yes, but it's also drop. You're dropping. Valid drop also makes it harder for your friends to help you, because again, the underlying problem is something real. So you really don't want to listen when they try to suggest that drop might be involved. Didn't you just come back from a party? Isn't it possible this is just drop? This is real! This is not a hair tie situation again! My feelings are valid! <laughs> just came from a party. You're dropping. And yes, your feelings are real, and what you're going through is real. But drop takes those real feelings and makes them much more raw and painful than they would otherwise be, and makes your emotional response to those real things much more intense and uncontrolled. Drop is kind of like being drunk. It makes your reactions and emotions untrustworthy. Maybe your job really does suck, but drop puts you in danger of overreacting to that problem or addressing it in extreme or unhelpful ways. When you're dropping, you're going to think that you're not dropping. So if you're ever like, am I dropping? Yeah, you're dropping. <laughs> Thinking that you're not dropping is like basically the best evidence of drop. My best advice is if you've recently played and you're feeling tempted to make a big decision, don't. The greatest trick the drop devil ever played was convincing you that you're not dropping. So if you've recently played or been to a party, please assume drop is involved in the aftermath and learn to regard your own emotions with some degree of skepticism. Maybe quitting your job really will turn out to be the right decision, but you can make that decision in a few weeks when you're ready. Until then, don't let drop make the decision for you. The immediate aftermath of a scene or party is not the time to blow up your life, okay? Who can drop?
Spankos, Spankos drop. Like I said, it's completely normal and every single one of us, from newbies to seen veterans, is in danger of it. A lot of attention gets paid to sub drop and I do understand why. Bottoms experience hormonal and chemical surges during play that can be really intense. And the physiology of bottoming affects our emotions in major ways. But tops drop too. They share all of the mental and emotional intensity of the scene and they even experience some of the same biological reactions too. And if you're a switch, Heads up, the way you experience drop after you've been topping might be completely different than the way you experience drop after you've been bottoming. So be on the lookout for that, okay? When does drop happen? I think most people realize that we're in danger of dropping immediately after a scene or party, but I don't think everyone knows that drop can also hit days or even a couple of weeks later, especially if you've been traveling or doing other active things that keep your adrenaline and endorphins at high levels. Everyone's body has different needs and recalibrates itself at different speeds. So just know that drop can happen anytime from like a few hours after a scene to like two weeks later. Don't dismiss drop just because it's been a week since your last spanking. That might still be the culprit. How can spankos care for ourselves during drop? Aftercare, 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 aftercare is the perfect way to end a scene and it's a really nice way to reinforce the underlying relationship that made you want to play in the first place. Aftercare can be as simple as a quick hug after a round of Spanko Spin the Bottle at a party, or it can be as detailed as a meal, cuddles, and a movie after an especially intense emotional or physical scene. In my case, aftercare doesn't prevent drop, but it does give me something nice to look back on while I'm dropping. Some other well-known drop strategies include Food, warm baths or showers, eating or drinking something sweet just to, you know, get some sugar in your bloodstream, listening to music, um, writing in a journal, cuddling a blanket. <laughs> it's also not a bad idea to avoid excessive drug or alcohol use while you're dropping, since that will probably just make a bad situation worse. I also think it's really smart to consider making a communication plan in advance. If you're the kind of person who likes to talk to friends when you're feeling sad, Schedule that. A really mean lie that drop sometimes tells us is, oh, my friends don't actually like me. They only tolerate me to be polite. That lie tricks us into not reaching out to our friends when we're dropping because we tell ourselves they don't wanna hear it or imagine that will be a burden. That sucks. But if we make a plan in advance to touch base with a friend or play partner at a predetermined time, it's easier to ignore that lie. We don't need to worry about forcing our friends to chat on the phone because we've already scheduled a time to do exactly that. Post scene communication plans. This is good stuff I'm giving you right now. It works. Trend it, kiddos. How can spankos care for other spankos during drop? Some of the ways that spankos can care for other spankos are obvious. We can make sure to ask our friends about their aftercare needs before a scene and be sure to meet those needs after it. We can be active and intentional about honoring post-scene or post-party communication plans we've already established with our friends. Or like if we've got a spanko friend who also has a YouTube channel, we can smash the like button, click subscribe, and ring the bell so you won't miss out on future videos. And, and we can leave a comment in the comment section. It's not just good for drop, it's good for the the algorithm. But that's all stuff you already know. I think there's one more way that Spankos can care for other Spankos, and I've never heard anyone else say it before. So I'm gonna say it. After a scene, some Spankos, particularly newcomers to the scene or people who don't have a ton of play experience, can get a little clingy. They want and need some attention from the person they just played with, and that makes a lot of sense. I think that's natural and reasonable. So if you're in a relationship with someone who plays with other friends, expect that some of those play partners might want some of your person's attention in the days or weeks after a scene. Don't be an asshole about it. No one is trying to steal your person with a few post-play phone calls, and those phone calls aren't an unreasonable or excessive thing to want. I'm actually bitching about something real right now. Do you guys like it when I get salty in these videos. This is basically a subtweet. About a year ago, I heard a story about some mild drama and yes, I do regard this one as drama within the scene. Apparently the deal was a relatively new girl came to a party and played with the boyfriend of a scene queen and then horror of horrors, she sent him a few text messages in the following weeks. I wasn't involved in this story, but the rumors that were passed on to me were very judgmental of this girl. And like, okay, what the hell do I know? I wasn't there, but frankly, I bet they were using this girl and taking advantage of her droppy vulnerability to capitalize on the whole false intimacy of a shared enemy thing 
I've talked about before. I bet this girl was just dropping. I bet she was just feeling a little bit lonely. And I bet she just wanted to hear some friendly words from the dude who had recently spanked her. Like, is that such a crime? My daddy plays with other people all the time, and sometimes those people want to text him in the days or weeks after a scene. Sometimes they want to talk to him on the phone. And like, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> it's healthy and normal. Can we try to have some compassion for other spankos, please? It can be easy and tempting to belittle or dismiss a person who is dropping as clingy, especially if we're feeling droppy and irritable ourselves. But that's that's not fair. We need to resist the temptation to exploit other people's vulnerability to make ourselves feel important. A droppy person who calls you after a scene isn't necessarily in love with you. And a droppy person who texts your partner a week after a party is not trying to steal that person. Give me a break. Drop is no one's fault. It's a shitty physiological inevitability. Please don't judge yourself for dropping. And please don't judge other people for dropping either. Is there any good news? The first drop is always awful, but it does get better over time. The first time Daddy and I met in person, it was under circumstances that were not ideal from a drop management perspective, let's say. We were already internet friends and I was passing through Oslo. He decided to fly out for two nights to meet me in person and that turned into, it turned into a two day butt stuff marathon. It was great. At that point, Daddy hadn't played with another Spanko in like four years and the joy of finally doing that again sent him to the moon. But then he just, had to fly back to England and go back to the same boring office with the same boring people. Drop hit him hard, like really hard. I think he spent his first day back at work looking up return flights to Norway and researching visa options to immigrate to the United States. Like dude was ready to blow up his life. But he powered through it and eventually it did go away. And I don't think he's had a drop that bad since. It does get easier to manage. Drop sucks. But think of it this way. Never having the chance to drop, never having Spanko friends, never having a community, never having play, that would suck a million times more. We just need to take care of ourselves, take care of our partners and friends, and power through it. Drop is like a spanking, maybe. It hurts, but you know it's worth every ouch. a spanking party right now and I'm dropping. <laughs> so I guess I should have mentioned that drop can happen when you're still at a party. So 